Hello everyone and welcome to episode 2 of Catch Me Abroad. We are here and joined by Lucas Williams. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. So I think we can go ahead and just get started about a little bit about yourself. You know, you can tell us who you are, what year you are, and what you studied. Yeah, happily. I am a recent graduate, just graduated uh, in June, so what, less than a month ago or something. Um, and with a BA in Global Studies and a minor in Japanese. And when I, for my EAP program, I studied abroad at ICU uh, University in Tokyo, Japan for a summer plus year program. Okay. And so what made you decide to go to Japan anyway? Like what was the process for you of wanting to go and study at ICU? Um, ICU specifically because it was a liberal arts school um, and Global Studies is kind of more in that. And they had a global in international studies program, which was similar enough to Global Studies that I thought it would be a good fit. Plus, I liked the location. Mm -hmm. And then Japan in general, um, I kind of have two main reasons. One, I'm uh, always uh, sad to admit, but definitely just like anime, you know? <laughs> um, that, it helped. I watched a lot of anime in junior high and high school, and it, it definitely got me into Japanese culture. Um, but beyond that, my high school was very diverse. I was one of the only white kids in actually most of my classes. Um, so I had lots of Japanese friends, lots of Chinese, Indian, just kind of every culture friends. Mm -hmm. um, so I had a very strong interest in Asia. Um, and then because of anime, I guess that kind of shifted more east into East Asia and Japan. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's nice. And then I know for a fact you and Brandon are actually close too. So do you want to, like, Brandon, elaborate yeah. on your guys' connection? Sure. So Lucas and I actually go a little bit back. Uh, we met in our sophomore year of college and. We were actually sitting in lecture in global studies and there were these two exchange students from Japan in front of us. And I think Lucas wanted to approach them and talk to them, but I got there first. Yeah, you switched so, in. <laughs> but, but it's okay because by the end of the, uh, end of the week, we were all friends, the, the four of us. And so we would study together. Um, we would eat lunch and hang out afterwards. And I think actually during that time, that's when I was also thinking about studying abroad myself. And definitely um, meeting exchange students helped me help inform that, that, um, you know, that decision to go abroad. And I'm yeah, sure yeah, it did the same for you. Yeah, 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 for sure. Did you have any prior knowledge in Japanese at all before you departed, or did you have to learn before you went to your program? Yeah, good question. Um, so I didn't have to have any Japanese before my program, um, mm -hmm. but entering college, I was pretty much dead set on studying abroad in Japan. And so during our freshman orientation, I was trying to figure out what classes to take. At the time, I was undeclared. I had no idea what I wanted to do. And I was thinking, well, I know I want to study in broad Japan. It would probably be helpful to learn the language before I go. Um, so I signed up over summer. I thought it was going to be really hard, but I'm like, but stick through it. It'll be fine. And mm -hmm. I ended up loving it. All the Japanese senseis at UCSB are amazing. I had a great time. And having that language, uh, like two years of language ability, I think did help before I went. And I actually wanted to touch on that topic of language. Because I know, Lucas, the way that you said it made it sound very natural. Like, I just took language classes and, you know, went abroad. But I think for many people, though, um, that is a very intimidating factor of studying abroad, especially in a country where English is not spoken um, commonly. So could you tell us a little bit about, you know, what made you take that first step to decide to actually um, commit to learning a language and then using that in application when you went abroad? Hmm, okay. Let's see. So like I said, I knew I wanted to go to Japan, and so I took Japanese as just kind of like a, I think it'd be helpful to know the language before I go. Mm -hmm. um, and like I said, I thought it was going to be really hard going into it, because I took Spanish in high school, and honestly, I hated it. I was so bad at Spanish. Um, so I kind of expected a similar situation in college, where I would just kind of slog through the classes. Like, I'd study and hopefully get good grades, but I wouldn't enjoy it. Um, but the senseis were awesome. Everybody in the classes were great. Um, and I think that really kind of turned my attitude around, Or every day after Japanese class, I was like so much more energized and ready for the rest of the day. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that really helped me just propel the language experience and want to learn more. So by the time I'm like, I'm going to go to Japan, like sure, maybe English isn't nearly as spoken or isn't spoken as profusely there as it is in other countries like England or anywhere else in Europe. Mm -hmm. um, but mm -hmm. I have that Japanese knowledge and I'm like, who cares? I, I want to learn now. Let's have some fun. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I guess it could be kind of scary, but like, if, especially if you're going to a big city, even if your Japanese isn't great, you can get by. You'll be fine. Yeah, and how did that help when you actually went to Japan? Because I know that um, in countries like Japan and Korea, um, you know, there's a lot of English in terms of like signs and postage and how to like navigate the city. So you can technically survive with just English, but having that added layer of Japanese knowledge, how did that help you abroad? Yeah, um, so I had two years before going, and by the time I was like, I was on the plane, I'm headed toward Japan, and I felt like I was riding high. I'm like, I know so much Japanese, I can say so much. 
And then I get there and I don't understand anything anybody <laughs> says. Completely like humbled me immediately. Like I get on the bus, no idea what he's saying, no idea where I'm going, just using Google Maps. Um, so those first few weeks, I was like, oh, I really don't know anything. Um, so that was, that was a, I think that was a good experience, though, just to like make you understand that in classroom learning is a bit different than the real life. Um, but after that, you, you just pick it up really fast. You learn all the phrases you need to know at like the convenience mm. store at a restaurant. And then from there, you can keep building. Um, and I think having some Japanese experience and learning while I was there really helped me meet a lot of Japanese friends um, through the dorm I was in and through the clubs I joined. Um, mm. And then just out and about while exploring or on trips. Um, you meet a lot of friendly people who are surprised if you speak Japanese when you don't look Japanese. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Studying abroad and learning language go hand in hand. Like, you know, if you're in a classroom and you're trying to study based on flashcards and you want to learn the word for like bathroom or something like that, you might forget it after a week. Uh, trust me, if you are in a situation where you have to find the bathroom of a foreign country, you will never forget that word <laughs> ever again. That's true. So, yeah. It's really a great experience, a great way to solidify what you've already learned, but also pick up new things. I don't want to make it sound though, like I don't know if I just came off this way, but I had a lot of friends who I met there that also had zero Japanese before mm -hmm. going and they learned all their Japanese while in Japan. Like it's totally possible. You don't have to have language yeah. experience before you go and like they had a blast, they enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. Would you say that if you don't go in with uh, knowledge of the language, or even if you do, um, how, how was it being received on the other end? You know, how did the students who attended your Japanese university locally, how did they uh, respond to you when you first met them? Uh, my university was incredibly international, like international's in the name. Mm -hmm. um, and so English is, like you can take all the classes in English if you wanted, which I did, and like half of the students there don't even speak Japanese when they apply. Um, so at the university, it was completely normal if I look white and I speak English, that's what they expect if I speak Japanese. They don't care either, they don't bat an eye. Um, but once you kind of go out more in the community, that's when people would be a bit more surprised, um, mm -hmm. especially like I obviously don't look Japanese. And so then it's more based on look. So if you look Asian, especially if you look Japanese, they kind of have already like they assume stuff immediately. Um, but then they're, they, they're very quick to change their like opinion and like be surprised and like very happy and like welcoming as soon as you mm -hmm. say stuff in Japanese and they're like excited mm -hmm. that like you're learning their language. So I guess now that we're talking about EAP and all this stuff, I wanted to ask you about your journey with EAP. So how was it going to the office the first time, talking to the advisors, the peer advisors there as well? You know, what was your experience planning your study abroad journey? Yeah. Um, well, actually, I should say the reason, one of the main reasons I chose UCSB was how well EAP was promoted here. So I saw on like the spring admittance day or whatever it's called, I went to an EAP orientation and I guess it was a peer advisor. I don't know what, I didn't know what they were called at the time, but they gave a presentation. I thought they did a great job. And so then afterwards, when I was going to Santa Barbara, I, it might, I may have stopped by in the Arbor to speak to someone first. I don't remember, but I definitely, as a freshman, one of the first weeks of school, stopped by the office on the second floor. Um, and it's just like, hey, I want to go to Japan. Who do I talk to? And they sent me into Megan. And oh my God, she's the best person ever. Ever since then, like I, I talked to her like over emails, just make sure everything was set. And she's like, yeah, you just start the application process uh, sophomore year. Um, and then after summer, in between freshman and sophomore year, we get there, me and my friend are walking around campus and we see Megan again. And she like remembered us, even though we hadn't speak, spoken that much during that freshman year. And it's just like, wow, these people really care and they really do want us to mm -hmm. succeed in studying abroad. Mm -hmm. So I was very pleasantly surprised. I think that's definitely a thing that's um, one of the more difficult aspects of deciding to go is like, where, where do I start? How do I apply? What do I do? Yeah, and it's really good too. I mean, that you started really early, especially in freshman year, since you knew that if it was something already in mind, you started the application, you got all your information down, and it was one of the greater moves to kind of do for your freshman year if you want to study abroad and you know what you want to do. I guess going on from there, so we've talked about yourself, we talked about a lot about your language background, especially here at UCSB. I kind of want to now shift that gaze over to your first day, the first time you went in Japan, that first orientation. How did that go for you? All right, let's see. My, uh, I arrived in Japan July 4th, funny enough. So I left uh, America July 3rd, the day before Independence Day, whatever, 4th of July. It's the really important it's called. Um, mm -hmm. But then because Japan is basically a day ahead of US, like just the way the time zones work, I mm -hmm. arrived there and it was already July 4th, like midday. Um, and so it's like, ooh, America Day, but in Japan. <laughs> <laughs> but no one there cared. Um, but I flew out there with my good friend Chris. Um, so it was nice to have someone else on the plane with me. And like we were figuring everything out together. And two very low level Japanese put together can make a somewhat okay intermediate Japanese person. Ah. <laughs> so so we, uh, if, it, if we had problems, like I couldn't say it, but he knew the word. And then he like forgot something. It's like, all right, I can do this part. 
Um, so we were able to figure it out together and I had like a printed instructions on how to get to the campus because it is in Tokyo, but it's a little bit on the outskirts. Mm -hmm. So it's like an hour and a half trip maybe from the airport to actually get to campus. Mm -hmm. Several different trains and then a bus at the final at the end to get there. Um, so that was a little tiring. I also don't sleep on planes. So I'd been up for like 18 hours at that point. Oh, um, wow. Yeah. Um, so we get to school um, maybe around... I don't know, was it like 5 in the evening or something like that? And like the orientation started at like 6.30, I think, in the evening. Um, and we met a couple other students on the bus, actually, at the train station going to school on the bus um, that were headed for the orientation. So we're chatting with them. We all get there, hang around for like half an hour in the dorm, and then they start the orientation. Um, very simple stuff, just like this is your, you're living in the dorm here, are the rules, we'll talk more tomorrow, basically. Um, and they're yeah. like, you guys want to go get some dinner? And so we walked to like the new, like the kind of, eating area in the town nearby campus. And actually, Lucas, I do want to ask you, um, speaking of like, you know, not knowing if things are like how, to, how things work and if that experience of navigating um, unknowns are fun or uh, scary, um, what was it like with your internship? Because you did do an internship in Japan, mm, if I'm correct. Yes. Yeah. Um, I'll do a brief little intro of that internship. So I interned at IBM Japan in the marketing department uh, for three months, January to April. I was in their data analytics group, um, which prior to which I had like zero experience. So it was very nice of them to take me on and teach me lots of stuff. Um, and so in the data analytics group, I analyzed different IBM assets, mainly blogs, looking at engagement rates and views, um, seeing how well they're doing and try to figure out why some sites are doing better than others and then providing feedback. Mm -hmm. um, so I went in about three times a week. Thursdays was a full day. I think Tuesdays and Fridays were like half days because I had class in the mornings and I went later in the day. Um, and through that internship, I got to do a lot of cool things besides just working. I also made just a bunch of adult Japanese working like salary men friends. Um, and they enjoy, they invited me to join their ball or their salsa club and their hiking club. So once a week I danced <laughs> salsa with a bunch of Japanese people. And then once a month I went hiking on these really cool places with a bunch of Japanese people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's um, super interesting. Cause like you, you go abroad thinking of like one idea of how this is going to play out and then mm -hmm. you experience something completely like that you did not even expect yeah i think interning abroad was one of like my best decision decisions i made um i loved everything about ibm all the people were amazing i had so many cool experiences that i don't think i would have had otherwise um and i got to see like a whole like the actual like working life what it's like to work and live in japan which is a little bit harder, I think, to do because you're a student when you're studying abroad. You're not usually working as much. So it was mm -hmm. a cool way to see the kind of the other side of Japan. Yeah, and then I guess I just want to know, like, how did you find that internship anyway? Did you do research before you went there or was UCEAP helping you out in choosing that internship that you got with IBM? Yeah, funny enough, I went a very unique route that I don't think would work for many people. I always feel a little guilty telling the story because it more or less kind of fell into my lap. Um, so back home in my hometown, about half a mile from my house is a tennis club slash like workout yoga mix of things. Mm -hmm. And my parents go there to do yoga classes like a few times a week. And it just so happened at that same club um, was another like older couple and their kid was there visiting them. But her kid, their kid is like working age. Um, and my dad was wearing a UCSB baseball cap. And so they started chatting like, oh, your son goes to UCSB. Yeah, yeah. Like I'm a UCSB alumni. Mm -hmm. um, and it turns mm -hmm. out that she is also the uh, CMO, Chief Marketing Officer of IBM Japan. So she grew up in my neighborhood, went to my high school, is a UCSB alumni, Japanese minor. She was a communications major, so almost almost the same. Um, and so I kind of just followed in her footsteps unknowingly. And then she was she came back to Japan, like she was just home for vacation. And then I her parents came to visit her, and they had heard about me. And so I went and met them. And then her parents, I guess, liked me. And they're like, yeah, we'll give you our daughter's contact information. No big deal. So I emailed her and she's like, yeah, I'll come meet me at the like IBM headquarters and I'll talk with you. And then I did. But it's like harness your connections, if anything. But yeah, no, for real. Like even yeah. though that was, that was a very like awesome like, <laughs> lucky coincidence, like connections are real. And, you know, I do think that especially like for after graduation, like having connections abroad is going to really widen like the possibilities of what you can do because mm -hmm. um, it really is about like who you know and the more people that you know, the more mm -hmm. options there are for you. So that's like another really great thing about going abroad I think yeah so I guess the good thing to know about it is networking 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 mm -hmm. just get those For connections sure. if you can especially if you're abroad you never know what those connections will do in the long run that you mm -hmm. may end up having a career mm -hmm. somewhere else too yeah now I know all these people at IBM Japan but and my supervisor while I was there he's actually moved over to Amazon Japan so now I have a connection at a new company there um, yeah those kind of stuff really do help that's excellent and you mentioned earlier that you saw not just like the student aspect of 
Japanese culture, but also like the professional aspect working with an actual company.、Mm-hmm. Um, do you think that kind of informed your decision on what you want to do now that you've graduated? Yeah, for sure.、Um, before going to Japan and like just in college, or whatever, and I was thinking about my future.、Um, and I still do. So I think I want to work at an international company. And working in Japan kind of cemented that. Like it was cool. I like the international, the big the scale of things, being able to work cross culturally.、Um, before going to Japan, I was thinking I'd like to work in Japan. Now that I worked in Japan for a while, I definitely still would, but it'd have to be at like a very international company. If it's、mm-hmm. a stereotypical Japanese company, they just have a different work life system、mm-hmm. that I think、mm-hmm. is honestly just too hard for me. <laughs> they work so hard.、Yeah. Um, but at an international, kind、yeah. of more Americanized company.、Um, The rules are a bit different,、um, a bit more laxed, and they give you more like free time, I guess, or like just things seem a bit easier. But now you know because you went. Now I, I know it was definitely a good experience.、Mm. And I think you told me before we、um, started the podcast that you had a very memorable last day of your internship.、Yeah. What was that like?、Um, so, like I said, I was there for three months,、uh, interning for three months. Um, I did salsa with them. They invited me to all these different like dinners, and my supervisor is Indian, so he always do like Indian dinner parties at different restaurants around Tokyo.、Um, and he like knew all the like the wait staff, and so we'd get like special stuff and like all、oh, you can drink stuff.、Um, and so I had a lot of mango lassies one time.、Um, and then on that last day of working there,、um, I didn't really have any work to do because I've turned in all my like laptops and stuff. So I was like,、mm-hmm. I can't do anything. Um, so just people like the friends I made there, like my coworkers, they all just kind of came around and like wished me good luck and like thanked me for my hard work. Mm-hmm. Uh, as you do in Japan,、mm-hmm. um, and then like I was leaving the building,、um, and one guy that I hadn't seen because he didn't know his stuff, he's like, "Oh, it's your last day, right?" He's like, "I'm like, oh yeah, it is," and he like gave me like a super deep bow and like was very very polite and like thanking me. And I was like, "Oh no, you don't have to do that!" Like, "Oh, it's so nice."、Um, and then so like I left the building, I like turned in my security badge to the security guard people. They also gave me like a nice bag of just a bunch of like IBM swag, which was really nice. Oh,、um, okay. And then as I was leaving the building, I decided like, oh, I should get the picture in front of like the IBM sign,、um, and so I just asked some stranger to take my picture. And then she's like,、oh, okay. And she took my picture.、Um, and then as I was looking at it, as I was walking away, like I got like super emotional. Like I'm not one to cry ever, any like usually.、Um, but I almost did. I got very sad. Just not because、uh... I, I was sad to be leaving, but just like the good experiences that I had there, all these like wonderful people I met. I was sad to leave them. So from your internship, aside from there, when you were at ICU, is there any memorable experience that you could recount that you know you'd like to share with us and to our audiences as well? Yeah.、Um... I have two you could pick from. Do you want like a heartwarming one or like a incredibly embarrassing one for me? <laughs> I、um, mean, my, my vote goes for embarrassing, but Carl, I don't know. What I was gonna say, why not both? So, <laughs> if we have time, sure.、Um, I'll start with the heartwarming one.、Um, so I went to I went like kind of West Japan on a trip with a friend,、um, and then partway through he left to go back early because he had some other stuff he needed to do. So I had like the last few days or like four or five days to myself to explore some more places. Um, and so I went to Nara, Japan, which is like the place known for all the deer,、um, if you're aware.、Mm-hmm. And I was walking around, and I kind of like was exploring some back areas because that's more fun to, you know, like get off the beaten path.、Um, and I was just walking down the street; it was really pretty. And this like older guy, so like you know, Jisan, he comes walking up towards me, and in English he says "Good afternoon" or like "Hello" or something. I think it's "Good afternoon," maybe "Good morning." I forget what time it was. But then I replied in Japanese to greet him, and he was just like, "Hmm, you replied in Japanese."、Um, and so then we had like a fifteen twenty minute long conversation, like in half English, half Japanese. Like we would both just kind of flip flop.、Um, he apparently like lived in New York for a while, and he's just like, "Ask me anything about Nara, and I can answer it, just like anything." So I just asked him like random <laughs> questions that I could think of on the spot, and he would just like ramble off facts about it.、Um, and then like after that fifteen twenty minute conversation, we parted ways, and I was just like, "Wow, what a." Cool random experience to meet this like very energetic, happy、mm. older guy who just wants to talk to a stranger. Sure, that is the best feeling when you're like in a foreign country and you just meet someone, connect, and they just like help you in a way that, and they do things for you that you could never have done like on your own. You know what I mean? Like that's why it's not the same as like just short term travel. I want to say I feel like when you actually、mm. have the chance to live there, you get to really make those, you know, spontaneous connections. Okay. Um, let's hear the embarrassing story. I, I would love yeah, to. Yeah, yeah, I want to hear、oh, this. Yes. <laughs>、um, so it's to preface it. It's it was my biggest like miscommunication, biggest like like verbal faux pas I had the entire time in Japan. And annoyingly, it was like my second to last month there. So like by that time, I was like much better at Japanese, and I still messed up really bad.、Mm. Um, so through the university I was at, they had a running club. And we would run maybe two, three times a week, just kind of in the evenings, easy runs. Just it was more of like a hangout club where we happened to run.、Um, but then the last few months there, some of the alumni were like, "Hey, let's do some races." And I'm like, "Sure." And I like running,、um, and so I agreed, and like I'm like, "Sign me up."、Um, and so 
it was all with alumni that I'd never met before, but I've been chatting with one of them because she helped me sign up for the race and like kind of handled all the paperwork. And she's like, all right, meet me at the station at this time and we'll go race. I'm like, all right, sounds good. Um, and so I get there a little early because that's what I do. Um, and then I see her, uh, I see someone who like matches her description, I guess, like what she'd be wearing, like she told me. Um, and I introduced myself and she's like, oh yeah, we've been texting. Um, and then she was like, wait a second, like, I know you. I'm like, huh, you do? It's like, I don't think I've met you before. And she's like, yeah, I met you at this other event that the club did like, like uh, in December. Um, but she had met like a year ago, like an extra year before I was even in Japan. And apparently there was just like another white guy that kind of looked like me. Um, <laughs> and I was just like, oh, okay. Cause I'm really bad with names. So I'm like, maybe I just didn't remember her. Like there were kind of a lot of people there, but like, I'm pretty sure I would have remembered, but like, I'll just go with it. Um, and so then throughout that, that day, we met more alumni and like none of them I had met, none of them confused me for someone else. Um, but we got talking and then she kept saying stuff mm -hmm. and like asking me about all these people. And I just kind of went with it and just kept on like, I, eventually I figured out that there'd been some kind of miscommunication, but I didn't know how to correct it at that point. So I just went with it and I was just like, yeah, uh, yeah, they're doing great. Or just like, yeah, like and I, was, uh, so I lied through my teeth for like an hour. And then the race finally started and the entire time I was running. I'm just like, how do I fix this? How do I fix this? <laughs> oh, um, no. So then I finally finished. I recover. I... And then I was talking with like her friend uh, who I hadn't met before. And I'm like, I'm like, all right, I have to come clean to you. I, there's been a mistake. And like I told her, she thought it was hilarious. And then she helped me explain it to the other person. And the other person was just like, huh. Really? Yeah, and I yeah. I just lied about like, <laughs> so much stuff. I felt so bad the whole time. It was, it was really good to get it off my chest, though, and hey, finally I mean, clear it up. If you could do that level of acting, that, means, that must have meant that your Japanese was really good at that point. I, yeah. It was either really good or, like, because I was definitely confused a lot of the time. Maybe she was just like, oh, his Japanese sucks, so it's okay. Like, he just doesn't understand. Mm. I think it's more, I think it was more that side. I see. Yeah. Okay. But, well, that's but funny. That's, that, that's that funny. is a really good story. Oh my god, it was so stressful. It made me run really fast though, because I wasn't even thinking about running. I'm just like, ah. And you know, um, hearing your stories, Lucas, like I can tell that going abroad for you, like a big highlight was meeting a lot of these interesting characters and meeting people and just seeing like where that takes you. Every interaction leading to a different experience. So I guess to kind of wrap things up, um, for people who are thinking about going abroad, hopefully one day soon, or just, you know, kind of, you know, hope to travel perhaps one day, what would be your advice for, you know, taking that first leap of faith? Hmm. I guess it's not a leap of faith, but first I would just say go to Japan. Japan is the best place ever. <laughs> <laughs> just a little plug there. Um, as far as studying abroad, uh, I'm sure they've heard it a million times all around EAP, but go for the year, if not longer, if you can. Um, you just get so many more experiences and you finally start to feel more comfortable and settled in at like the three to four month mark. And then if you're only there for a quarter, you have to go home then. But if you're there for the year, um, you really get to experience more and like feel like you actually live there now, not that you're just visiting. Um, but if you're not studying abroad, still go to Japan. Um, don't be afraid to ask questions. If you know the language, even just a tiny bit, try to speak it as much as you can. Um, and if you like want to, if you have a question, don't look it up on the internet, just like ask someone. Like more than off, more more often than not, people are very friendly and want to help you, and it leads to really fun interactions most of the time. Well, thank you so much for joining us on our show. Is great you for having me. Yeah, it was great hearing all your stories. So again, big thank you for sharing all that with us. You're welcome. Yes, thank you, Lucas. And quick plug in: What are you currently up to now, and where can we follow you? Um, I really don't use social media, so it'd be very hard to follow me. <laughs> You'll have to contact one of my friends who know about me. Um, um, but what I'm currently doing now is I'm currently searching for a job, hopefully in the marketing area of business in an international company, and we'll see where that leads. Awesome. Great to hear it. Well, thank you so much, Lucas, for joining us. Uh, you know, we want to keep being updated on what your, where your life takes you, and we really appreciate your time here. Yeah, thank you for having me.